it was a killing field, it was brutal, and the Japanese were not going to surrender easily. This week in history, the Battle of Iwo Jima, 1945. Across black volcanic sand, Marines crawled, ran, and slipped towards the entrenched Japanese. Starting on the 16th of February, the U.S. Navy had engaged in a softening up operation and of the 30,000 men who were to wait ashore on the first day, it was predicted that reinforcements would not be needed. The island, although a little over four miles long, was key to General Curtis LeMay's bomber offensive on Japan's home islands. This is the Pacific as the Joint Chiefs of Staff view it. A battlefield, a vast fortress-studded plain on which key strongholds anchor a Japanese defense line guarding the heart of the homeland. The Americans were met by 21,000 Japanese soldiers and a dizzying network of caves, tunnels, and concrete pillboxes that a determined enemy used to deadly effect. The most heavily fortified island in the world. Buried deep underground lay 20 years of Jap preparation for murder. The tenacious defense of Iwo forced Admiral Raymond Spruance to commit approximately 40,000 more men to the campaign. Despite the iconic flag raising atop Mount Suribachi on February 23rd, the bloody battle would continue for nearly another month. The 36-day slog horrified military planners and American citizens alike. In the end, 6,821 Marines were killed, with another 19,217 wounded. And of the Japanese, only 212 defenders, which is 1% of the original garrison, were still alive to surrender. The Guadalcanal hero, John Bassalone, was actually killed on the first day of Iwo Jima. He didn't have to go back. He was doing kind of these war bond tours, and his, his new wife begged him not to go back, but he felt a duty to his men, and on the first day of the invasion, he was killed. For more stories and videos like these, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Oh, and also on HistoryNet.com. Go there first. <laughs>